Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Are you, uh, do you think you go a little bit lenient on the Malenko since you are a Malenko graduate? Well, let's go to number six. <laughs> <laughs> number six took place in Japan. I saw this on an old VHS, and then I, then I recently seen it on YouTube. And when I say recently, I probably watch it about once a year. And it's Joe Malenko versus Dean Malenko in, in all Japan. So do I go lenient? I don't think so, because I think... Way back in 93, I've heard other people say, man, Dean Malenko is one of the most underrated wrestlers in the world. And I think that, you know, his height, his height, his size held him back some. But Joe was uh, all, the uh, All-Asian uh, Junior World Heavyweight Champion at one time. You know, they put the, uh, the All-Asian Tag Team titles on him at one time. I mean, so I think their credentials speak for themselves. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm lenient. I'm definitely biased, you know, uh, uh, towards those guys. And if you watch that match, Joe and Dean just, they do a double drop kick and miss each other. They do a double cross body, you know, and, and connect. And, it's, you know, you just see the clash. I, I've said it before early on. It's like, you know, Dean was, Dean's more the art performer out there working. Where Joe, you know, he could he could do the shoe style, submission style, and, and Dean could too. But they made stuff look so smooth and so real. But they also made it look like it was com, uh, competitive, still, if you will. And yep. I like that. Uh, to answer your question, I think I, the best way I can answer it is: I don't know that I'm lenient, but I'm certainly fucking biased. <laughs> I think that's a fair answer, and I you just did, I didn't want to use the B word. That's why I used lenient. I think an argument could be made that Dean Malenko was one of the greatest in-ring performers of the last 25 years. He uh, just that's, I think that's, I, that's a great statement. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, he just, for some reason, and it's funny to me because you've told me yourself that when you talk to Dean Malenko, Dean Malenko's sharp, witty, funny, on point. You put a microphone in his face. This is me speaking, not you now, but you get a microphone in front of him and none of it came across. No. None at all. Yeah. And it's just weird. I mean, I was stoked when he was included in the Horseman. He was just such a great in-ring worker. There were there were two people I said would be the future of pro wrestling back in the mid '90s when I saw him, and Dean Malenko was one of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I could watch Dean Malenko wrestle all day. Yeah, I've said it before. He was the perfect guy gene wrestler for Japan. Give him yeah. a manager. Don't make him talk. Just let him go out and whoop ass. Yeah, yeah, and that that's it is it's the thing is it's, it's not a dig, and and, no. I, and I said it before, and you've already said you said you're speaking for you, not for me, but I'll say it too. That guy, man, the fucking wit that he had, the the funny, the timing he had, for whatever reason, when that microphone came on or that camera, you know, flashed up, man, it just did not shine through. I don't know if he was just trying to. Stick with that quote, Iceman, you know, stare, g uh, gimmick, you know, whatever. Just nothing ever really come across that away on promos and stuff. But as far as in-ring performance, man, that guy, he just... I watched him over before that match took place. I watched him in, um, you know, Australia just night after night going, I've heard all these great stories about these, you know, other guys and and here's Dean and he's like fucking he's shining you know I'm like holy shit his talent why isn't he with a big company you know yeah. and of course I knew he was making money in Japan I know he was wrestler of the year in 1997 but what people don't understand he had been in a wrestling business for like 18 years before he got a big break he was a, he was a big star in Japan uh, you know he he started my training after about four months. Four or five months into my training, Dean kind of took over. We become friends. We're close in age, give or take a couple of years. And I always say it, give or take, because I don't want to stooge him out that, yeah, yeah. that I might be. I'm a little bit younger. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> Dean Dean's done stuff for WWF back in the day, like man, uh, not man, he shit, refereeing when it comes to Tampa some. Uh, he'd done a lot of different things uh, for, for NWA, stuff that was off TV, because, and I asked him about it, because I wasn't smart enough to the business back, I'm like, you know, hey, why aren't you on that show, why, how are you, why are you, you know, but it's a paycheck, and I understood that, but he said, because, you know, he can't go on TV, and he was making killer money back in the day, him and his brother over in Japan, he said, I can't go on TV and get beat here to expect to keep my contracts in Japan, so even though he had some good connections with those companies, because they knew who he was, 
he couldn't just go on TV and, and wrestle and get beat, but he could, you know, work some independent dates for him as an independent contractor and do, um, you know, some refereeing or uh, maybe book some guys and do TV jobs and that type of thing. So Dean always had his finger in the pot, if you will, stirring a little bit, keeping the interest out there. But um, with that said, Dean, to me, I said it, I was in Australia, and I looked at the referee, and Dean was in the ring ref- wrestling with another referee, obviously, in wrestling, uh, Chris Benoit, I think it was. Yeah. I just looked at Frankie Reyes, who was from Florida. He's a Blanco guy. He was a good friend with Larry, a little bit older than Dean and myself. And um, I looked at Frankie, and I said, man, my God. Is, is Dean Malenko the most underrated wrestler in the world right now or what? And Frankie said, man, Bobby, I've said it for years. And this was 93. And, um, and, and Dean, to me, there's nothing he could or could not do in a ring. He, he, he was, I'll say this about him and I'm going to say it about someone else in just a minute. And that is this. If Dean Malenko's personality, because I'm going to let you finish up, Dean, otherwise I'll ramble on too long about Dean. Sure. If Dean's personality, because he had a great body, Dean could, he was so you would not Dean had that fucking tendon ligament strength too by the way he had a lot of he was a shooter and and he he did some different stuff I mean he could work but Dean had a good body and Dean could work but if Dean's personality that held him back a little bit because of the personality that you saw on the back off camera riding around with at a Hooters or at a restaurant or just just on a bus with Dean would just bust your gut with just funny, smart witticisms, very educated, very worldly. And um, man, if he could have, if he could have portrayed that on the TV with his interviews and stuff, it's hard to tell what he would have been able to do. Especially once they got to WWE up there, WWF, whatever the fuck. I always say that. But anyway, my point is, if he could have conveyed that off camera, his 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 real personality onto camera, it's un it's unreal. But even though he was wrestler of the year in 97 and world traveled, worldwide famous and all that, I still think Dean Malenko is one of the most underrated professional wrestlers of all time, and I'll shut up. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, for my money, he is the greatest technical wrestler to have ever appeared on television. Mm. Um, I, I could watch that guy. Look, back in the 90s, I said him and one other guy, said they are the future of pro wrestling. You know, neither one turned out to be true. I, I think the problem was, like, and you've told me before, like, if you talk to Dean Malenko, you've told me he's the funniest son of a bitch in the room. <laughs> he's got a cutting wit. He can turn a phrase. I think the problem was you put a mic in front of him, and he just, it didn't come across. No. I think it's just one of those things. It just it didn't carry well. I think Dean Malenko is a fucking major talent. I think he is one of the most overlooked person easily. Like we said before, he could be my number one on this list easily. Yeah. And when they got him to the WWE, they just didn't know what the fuck to do. That That's going to lead me down a question here. I, I got to know your opinion on this. Better technical wrestler, Jody Malenko or Dean Malenko? Oh, man. <laughs> God, you make me choked up. Um... Well, Jody was a shooter. Jody was actually trained by, trained by Carl Gotch. So, better performer, easily Dean. Um, better technical wrestler, shooter, hooker, uh, more dedicated to that art would be Jody. And, um, man, yeah, Jody for sure, because he had the teaching of Carl Gotch behind him. Yeah. And Dean... And I think Hero Matsuda worked with him some. Carl worked a little bit. Him and him, <clears throat> Carl and Dean didn't get along very good because he was he was younger than Jody. So that was one of those situations where you know you got a bigger brother that could just eat up a little brother, and you don't want that, you know. So right. when Dean got out of school, from my understanding, from just having to hang out with him, train with him, traveled with him some throughout Florida at the time. Um, you know, I think Hero helped him quite a bit, and it, of course, he had, they both had good high school coaches, and from my understanding, so I would I would say when you're making it look good and performing and in ring work, you know, you got to go with Dean. But as far as legit, you know, you have to go Jody, yeah. hands down, hands what? down. どうなんでしょうか馬場さんこんなことを伺ってよろしいのか分かりませんがこの2人だけにこう分かり合っているといいますか、まあ、この2人の対決によって普段見られないそういうテクニックも出ていますかそうですねあの相手が違うとねやっぱりその受けられないものもあるわけですよあなるほど彼ら2人でしたねやっぱり兄貴がこうすればこうなるんだなあそうこ,うしこうして受けなきゃなというねそのものはできますからねなるほどですからなんかこう
教科書みたいなね、はい、そんな感じもしないでもないんですよね。そうですね。今10分が経過しました。ジョー、ディーンマレンコが今上になって攻めています。さあこれをスクッと丸めました。スモールパッケージホールドもちょっと違います。ジョーマレンコ、今10分が経過しました。馬場さんどうなんでしょうか。あの馬場さんはあのフレッドアトキンスさんにお亡くなりになりましたがアトキンスさんに習いました。えー、みんなこの師匠テーズルーテーズさんとかあゴチさんとかいるわけですが、全員みんなこのこういう,うなんでしょうか。う基本というのは違うんですか。そればっかしですね。みんなのそれぞれ特徴がありますか。あそれはねあの、えー、得意技を持ってますからね一人一人。ははそれぞれ個性が違うわけですね。そうですね。ははこんどは左の肩逆エビ固めのような形です。いや右足です。失礼しました。ジョーマレンコの右足を攻めています。もう上半身は真っ赤になっています。チャンピオンのジョーマレンコ赤いトランクスです。今度は足をひねりに行きました。両者ともにこのシーズンオフには。全日本プロレスの若手菊池小橋をハワイに置きまして、このレスリングのグランドテクニックを教えました。まあ指南役となったわけでありますが、体調もベストであります。尺度を色に焼けました両選手。ハワイ特訓の成果です。今度はフロントのヘッドロックです。ここからどう,いう,ふうに投げるか。ご覧のように入っています。鶴田選手などもこれをこの頃よく見せます。膝をつきました。このマレンコ兄弟のお父さんはグレートマレンコ。馬場さんはあのグレートマレンコ選手とこう戦ったところがあるようですけれども、どんなお父さん、まあどんなレスラーですか、タイプとしては。そうですね。あのこの兄弟を想像したらね、えー、全く反対の正反対なんですか。はい、正反対でしたね。そうですね。こう親に似るって言いますけども、あと言いますとラファイトですか。そうです。ははまあチェーンデスマッチの鬼なるというこう異名を取っているそうですが。おばさんこうに見てますとね面白いんですねあのドリーにしろそれからニックボックウンクルにしろテルテビアスにしろニセレスラーはちょっとまあこのちょっと地味という言葉は洗ってないと思いますが実力派が多いんですねイブシムのようなねということはねなんでかっていうとね、えーはい、やっぱ親がこうレスリングをしてきたわけでしょ、えー、でそ,その親に教わるということはね、はい、親にその基本がみんなできてるということなんですよねでこう基礎のしっかりしたワイルイブシンのテクニシャンが生まれるわけですね。バックに回りました。ジョーマレンコ、186センチ104キロ。コラエルディーンマレンコ、185センチ103キロ。弟、弟が後ろに回った。さあどうだジャーマン狙えるか。ジャーマンが得意だ。こう描いた。綺麗なブリッジ。そのままどうだ。カウント。ツー。この弟のディーンマレンコ、弟のどんな技が一番怖いか。このように聞きましたらジョーは答えてくれました。ジャーマンだと。今そのジャーマンが炸裂。さあ今度はブレバスターの体勢。これをフィッシャーマンで切り返す。フィッシャーマンで切り返した。やはりこれは兄の方が一番上。カウントツー。カウントツーであります。そして今度は2位を当てていく。これ動きが早くなるか。ブリスタム。バックにはある。バックにもあった。リンマルンコ。さあ今度はそのままホイップできない。体を入れ替えた。そのままジャックナイフのエビ固め。カーターはどうだ。カットワンでワンで返しました。肩が上がりました。ワンで返しました。スリリングな攻防です。息がつけません。ロープに追いやった。ダリアット失敗。もう一回失敗。今度。ボディアタック。同時打ち。相打ちです。同じことを考えていました。兄弟のジョーマレンコ、そしてディーンマレンコです。フォー。今ファイブまでカウントが入りました。ああ、今度はロックック。ババさん。兄弟なんですね。こういう二回もですよ。そうですね。やっぱりね同じこと考えるんですよね。考えるんですね。そうですか。さあどうですか。またダブルナックダウンの形になりました。ダブルナックダウンの形になりました。さあ今度はどういう風に攻めるか。下に潜り込んだ。さあおっとフロントスプレックスか。これをフック足をフック。防御の仕方は完璧にしている。手の内を落ちている。さあ今度はツーブストンのファイルドライバーか。
抱え上げてそのままそのまま後ろへ持っていった体重を預けたさあ逆にツームストッパーならばもう一回あーっとおーこれは観覧車を見ているようでそのまま落としたしかし今のは脳天を打たずに背中を打っていきましたいやー面白いツームストンいくと思ったんですが背中を打ちました今度は15分間フランクローでアタック呼んだ自爆リンマネコ自爆さあ今度はおっと首を首をいや足を捉えてそのままジャックレンカウントスリーカウントスリー面白い入り方をしました同じなんですよこの,、はい、この入り方はええー、いやー意外とこのディーンマネコは最後スッとこういう形でスカウントスリー取られてしまったんですがどういうことなんでしょうかどういうことでしょうかって言われてもね、まあ、この今日使ったんでしょうかいやいや全然これはもうまともでしょうまともに抑え込んだポールの人ということですか15分34秒です最後はジャックナイフ式のエビ固めご覧のジョー・マレンコお兄さんの方ですやはり馬場さんの,のこの勘が当たりました15分34秒